This week on the Awesome Cast, we talk about the brand new shiny Apple announcements, what's new with Nokia and Microsoft when they're not freaking your RT device, and uh, also a cool little gadget called the Cast AR that's currently in Kickstarter. All that and more. This edition of Awesome Cast is brought to you by PittsburghOnVideo.org. Check out the best videos from Pittsburgh all in one place, PittsburghOnVideo.org. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said. Hey guys, it's the awesome cast where we get geeky, we get nerdy, uh, we, 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 it's especially techie day today, of course, with the announcements and everything with Apple, uh, we'll get into that, of course, joining me in studio, as usual, uh, on the couch, John Chichilla, how you doing, at Chilla like on I, the Twitter. I, sh- I should always, like, look to the side. Why, why to the side? I don't know, because it's, like, tilted, and I'm like... <laughs> hey, you know what? Like the, yes, yes, is a crappy, busted uh, uh, tripod, but I'm really I like it. Kind of digging this that look. Batman look. I, I, I'm okay with this Batman with look. stash. Yeah, it was really epic on the on the movie podcast earlier, so <laughs> I, I'm I'm kind of okay with this. Um, but also joining us from an undisclosed undisclosed location, apparently inside the internet, is AJ yep. Kupnik joining us. How you doing, sir? Uh, Hi, everybody. I am deep inside the internet in a non-disclosed location. There isn't even a sign out front, I swear. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, it's a very noisy room, so if it sounds noisy when I talk, that's why. There's uh, two air conditioning units to my sides, um, and there's cabling, miles and miles of cable. So, yeah, so, yeah, so I'm for, inside the internet. Forgive us on his, his audio quality. Yeah, we were actually playing with the noise reduction, which is apparently doing a really, really good job. Uh, here, hold on, hold on. Let's see. If you'd like to know what the noise reduction doesn't doesn't do, uh, let's see. Uh, here's what it on. And that's what I hear behind me all the time. So then I, I just turn it back on. And, and that's the noise reduction in in uh, Google Hangout. That's on the Mac. It's on the so Mac. Buy itself. a Mac. Buy a Mac. If you're gonna if you're gonna do things in loud rooms. And Talk on a phone or voice or whatever. Five Yeah, they're pretty good with that. They, the uh, tech uh, on the phones are, are pretty good with the noise product reduction too. So, um, awesome. So, let, I mean, let's get right into it. Um, we of course had the big Apple announcements today. Um, I, let's hey, let's do order like they ordered it. Well, first of all, we got a line of uh, brand new uh, MacBook Pros. Uh, the Mac, the MacBook. No, the MacBook Airs did not get updated. They today. got updated. Yeah, they they got, got updated, updated before. before. Sorry, I got I'm setting some stuff up here. Um, and uh, so you got the MacBook Pro that got updated. You got the, the Mac, Mac Pro. Pro. Oh, the Mac Pro got announced, and this is where. Uh, and I'll, I'll I'll get this right off. I really wish I had three grand um, because I mean <laughs> I you know I used to I used to run on Mac Pros. They've been horribly 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 neglected. This is a leap beyond the giant cheese grater uh, that. We, that we used to run, and I understand still run at my old company. Uh, so I think it's much needed to kind of push that stuff to the next generation there. Uh, I, I'll i go with the, uh, the Mac Pro being priced at three grand. Uh, I saw somebody call it cheap. Uh, three grand for a quad core with a big SSD and a pile of RAM, the tube of pain. That thing is, I'm not kidding you. That thing is a beast. Yeah, I mean, you got two GPUs in there. Um, you, you can power three 4K monitors right off <laughs> off the base model. And this is this is one of those things. Yeah, exactly. And this is one of those things. Yeah, you can probably build it for half the price on the PC side. Nope. But, no, really? Nope. I've tried. Really? So here's the reason why the Mac Pro took forever to come out. They previewed it in June, but it waited until they came out now. Um, Apple, for years, has always used server chips in the Mac Pro. Yeah. And they were waiting on the latest release of the Intel Xeon E5s, which I have 28 servers that I'm installing right now that have all of them. <laughs> um, they were waiting for that chip to come out. And Intel just released it like a month, maybe a couple weeks or a month ago. Um, that server chip is expensive. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's like a solid grand of a print. And Holy crap. So for that three grand, if you if you spend a mere thousand dollars more than the base price, you get a six core processor, the dual um, AMD Fire Pro GPUs with three gig of RAM on each GPU, sixteen gig of memory, and a two hundred fifty six gig of the sixty four. It goes of, up the, of the, the new PCI uh, based. Flash storage. I think they're saying you can get it up to a terabyte of flash storage. But I mean, that's that's a fast machine. Mm-hmm. I, I can't imagine you're going to have to wait for much. <laughs> this, is, this is probably true. Hey, it, it is. It's available in December. You can't even try to start specking this thing out. They just give you the base models here. Um, so, and what I think it's up to twelve cores that they're going to be doing with this thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, up to twelve core processing power, up to sixty four gigs of RAM, dual workstation class GPUs, which are the uh, AMD Fire Pro workstation class GPUs, um, uh, faster PCIe, flash based storage, Thunderbolt two on board. Uh, it's six of those ports, and it was it. Each of those would run, I think, four devices. Six devices. Each of those Thunderbolt two ports are capable of doing twenty gigabit throughput each. Yeah, this is I'm not waiting. This is um, uh, somebody. There was a, uh, a reality check tweet, and uh, well, uh, actually, the reality check tweet was it that this yes, this equipment exists already to do four K workflows in real time. Uh, but this is the first time we had something with Mac, and it is a pretty decent design i gotta think if you're getting something like that on the pc side you're not getting something you're getting a giant box am i right yeah i mean, I mean if you're buying one of those you're buying a giant tower yeah or a server and it's gonna and it's gonna heat your home uh yeah. <laughs> take three times the power and 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 be loud as hell uh i guess i know one, one concern was you know the mac the mac towers were loud like I, yeah. sometimes when it kicked in, when we were pushing all the renders and everything, it did sound like it was about to take off like a jet I'm engine. I'm pretty sure it sounded like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that, that exactly. Yeah, okay. exactly. So uh, we didn't get cold too much down in that office. Um, so this this is a big step. I, I, I know like a lot of people aren't going to really experience this, but this re cements Apple as being the high end guys. You know. Uh, supposedly there's going to be more stuff along with Final Cut Pro X. I think that's going to further that as well. Um, I know, like, I know the stigma is still out there that Final Cut X is not worth it. Um, that's a mess. People jumping over to Premiere all the time and say, "Well, at least I can get a cheaper PC." But I think, I think it's more powerful than, than people realize. Well, and, and with this kind of hardware, I think you, you may even see people say, "You know what? I if I'm going to jump to Premiere, maybe I'm just going to jump to Premiere on on the Pro." I mean, there's no reason. I mean, you're, you're not seeing PCs specced mm-hmm. with all this. I mean, it'll be interesting to see in the coming weeks how different PC manufacturers do try to mimic yeah. what Apple yeah. does has yeah. done. And, and, and this is what we see after every Mac announcement mm-hmm. or Apple announcement. Everyone tries to mimic uh, what they did. What's up, AJ? Hi. Yeah. They previewed this with basically all of the specs in June. Yeah, if they haven't come out with it by now, but they they haven't had to because, like you said, the chips aren't out. I I don't see it'll be interesting. I I bet you you see mimics. You're going to see a bunch of competitors now push a high end PC. There's a lot of competitors that are trying to push high end, and nobody wants to buy them because everybody looks at them. Oh, it's a Dell. Why would I buy the Dell? Yeah, I'm going to buy the Mac Pro. Because one, it looks cool, so I can show it off to my customers. But also, it runs all of the software that I'm trying to use with video and audio and, and you know, big time photography. And, so. and, and I think, I, and I think, even at this point, uh, with something like like at this level, I, I, I think there are still people that are bought into the Apple ecosystem into the level of service and build quality. Like again, I could get something with all these specs as much or cheaper uh, on the PC side, but then you have to deal with. Microsoft, and you can look at. We'll talk about later what's going on with the 8.1 update. You know, mm-hmm. that's a big nightmare. And then I gotta pay how much? Wait, was 8.1 a free upgrade? Free. Okay, yeah. okay, but 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 still, like licensing and everything. Um, <coughs> it, it's. I think it's a little tougher. Um, it, it's not as nice, and, and it's not. I can take this to the store and say fix it. 
you know. Um, that's, I mean, that's why I went Mac because I was tired of building. I had no problem building machines or buying Dells for the longest time, but I'm like, I don't want things to go wrong. That kills my workflow. And I cannot think of anything except for something stupid that I've done uh, over the last three years that I've been do working for myself where a Mac has, uh, other than, you know, just I need a new Mac because the performance was hitting a wall, um, that really slowed me down or cut me off. Well, and, and that's why I think I like I look at my lifestyle. I've switched from PC gaming to console based gaming. I switched from PC based hardware to the Mac hardware, and I got I did it because I got tired of chasing hardware. Mm -hmm. I got tired of constantly every every three months trying to upgrade a video card. Every every so often putting more memory in. I got tired of spending all that money. Now I'm buying a device. I'm waiting till. The the OS is no longer supported on it, and then I'll refresh. Mm -hmm. And and I'm getting. I mean, look at we talked about it with Android. How they're they're doing software updates to better their hardware. Apple gave the same announcement today. Mavericks, you, you get an extra hour of battery life. You get better memory utilization. I just see it. I think we're going to see a huge run of software that in, in, improves on our hardware. Android's proven they can do it. Apple's proven they can do it. Microsoft. Well, well, we'll see what they can do. Um, the eight one was more about UI changes and, and some some fixes, but I, I think we're going to see a revitalization of the of the software revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, let me jump into another piece now. Okay. So they came out with the new MacBook Pro. Yeah. But the Haswell chips. Yeah. We have the MacBook Air. But the Haswell chips. Yes. I am really sad that I didn't get the Mac Mini announcement that I wanted. Did he even get the what? The Mac Mini announcement that he wanted. Uh, so, so these are still, the Mac Minis are still pre Haswell, right? Yep. And I see them doing a silent upgrade just like they did with the iMac. Just might swing out yeah, here I mean, soon. Do that. But, like, why didn't they do it now? Yeah. Because why didn't they, they do it when I had it? Just, hey, look, we're why, why didn't they do it when they did the they did the iMac right after the the announcement? I, I think it's to they don't want to detract from people saying, "Oh, I can get a Mac Pro," or "Yeah, I yeah, can yeah, I yeah. can save." You don't want to be sitting there saying, "Hey, this grand. little device," which, by the way, I have one of these from 2011 sitting right in front of me, and that's how we're doing this show, uh, yeah. it, which is plenty. It's enough power for me to do the final cutting and everything. Sometimes I have to wait for that little beach ball as things catch up. But it is enough. So you sit there and say, oh, all this power and this little thing, da 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 And then here's a three grand version. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah, exactly. I think it does detract. And this is a very I, carefully laid plan when they do this presentation. If they slid up, uh, like, a quick, like, hey, this is the Haswell Mac Mini, I'll have my money. Yeah. There you go. Um, hey, Mavericks, that's free. It's mm -hmm. free and already downloaded on my laptop. I actually finished it uh, within the last like hour. Or so you have, you were like traveling on Mine's the train installed. with it installing. Is it installed? Oh yeah, I'm I'm already I'm already on to the next uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight updates post Mavericks install. Oh, I didn't look at this yet. <laughs> I, I honestly have not even gotten in here to see any of it. Let me see if I can pull up. Yeah, I'm officially computer. taking uh, Sorgatron Studios bandwidth by oh, by storm over good. here. <laughs> so, so I uh, I downloaded with... most of it. I got let's see 4.89 gigs. Okay, and then I had to pause it and come inside the internet. So <laughs> I would so, be done by now. So I have it here. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really look too too much different. Let me actually fix this up so you can actually see my entire. And this is my 2009 uh, MacBook Pro. So I wanted to um, here. Let me pop it over. Oh, iBooks there. gets installed by, de installed iBooks, by default. Yeah, iBooks is already down there by default at the bottom. I noticed. Um, let's see that pops up. There, there it is. So, so, and I haven't opened any of these apps or anything. Uh, nothing real crazy. It told me uh, Flip for Mac is not compatible. So that was interesting. Uh, I haven't really dug into too too much of this uh, over here. I, I noticed you do have a Facebook button, which is funny since we don't have tweet and Facebook buttons on our on our iPhones anymore. Uh, but iMessage is built right in too. So let's actually see, do, 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 if I hit the messaging and I can Ooh. say two and I'm going to say Missy, hopefully it doesn't pull up. Oh, there's our number. There we go. Uh, we'll, we'll just 
pop off of there uh, for a second <laughs> while I do that. Uh, so, so there we go. So, 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 Missy, say hi. Uh, messaging from the show, and this is the this is one of those kind of little things that it's like well, they talked about. You could reply to notifications like right away. Um, so there you go. Other than that, like I said, iBooks. Uh, I, I noticed a couple other ones. Uh, let's see, Maps is in here. I really liked what they were showing up with Maps today with the 3D effects. Um, I don't know how effective it is to have a desktop map, so. I, it, it, really? I don't know, because I look up directions a lot at home. I do. I look up directions and, all the time. And, and based on the fact that it's then going to... It's got like Google Now. When yeah. I look it up at home, because you, you're, now you're a Chrome user. Yeah. But And... I've actually moved to Chrome for that reason, even with my iPhone. And now I may, based on Safari getting better battery life, better CPU utilization than Chrome, I may flip-flop back more than I, back to the way I used to. But the fact that I can look up an address and boom, the next time I look at my phone, it's yeah. in sync. That, that really is kind of a killer thing. So, okay, now I don't really, okay, I got plus and minuses here. Um, so, here's, here's where we're at. If I pull out here, we'll see Pittsburgh a little bit. I notice I got a couple different modes. We got we got standard, we got a hybrid, which pulls up. Okay, that looks nice. We got some satellite. Um, where's the 3D mode? And I don't think we have much for 3D. And I do like it does have the pinch to zoom and everything works uh, on the Mac Pro. On the keypad. So I mean, this I mean to me this doesn't look too much different than. If I was using Google Earth or something, it's nice that it is all uh, built in. Uh, I don't think we have 3D in our city. Like uh, that's always like the bigger cities where they when they show that off. That always disappoints me a little bit, you know. So. Well, that means that everything's just a size blower. Yeah. <laughs> Although, hey, look, Civic Arena still there. So. Uh, <laughs> R.I.P. Yes, exactly. Um, I'm just really excited that they, that they decided to move it up for free. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Keychain, I mean, you know, maybe, and this is something we saw across the board. iLife is free. Uh, iWork is free across all the devices when you buy the new ones. And we were just talking because mm -hmm. I was wondering, it's like, hey, we've just bought new phones. How do I, you know, how do I get the new things? Because I thought something popped up. And it looks, if you if you bought a new one, you haven't gotten that new iWork stuff, just go to the store and it's free for you. Hey, um, uh, I just want to plug this up. What's that? I want to plug this up. One. If you love the city of Pittsburgh like we do, go get iWork on everything. It's written in Pittsburgh. iWork is written in yep. Pittsburgh. Yep. Really? Uh, yep. And the other uh, thing is, if you buy it or you get it for free, it does it on your account. Yeah. So if you have an older device, let's go down. That's yeah, because I, I noticed that before. Because well, even when I got a new, when I got the Mac <laughs> Mini, um, it came, it gave you permission. I guess that works the same way as that, then, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Because uh, it already had on your accounts so it, it what five devices, five devices. Yeah. Uh, so now I poured it over to my old MacBook to the iMac down here. Um, so so it pulls it all around. So you upgrade, you get everything. Yeah. You know, or it, or you go to the Apple nice. Store and sign yourself in on their iTunes account, and then just go click 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 click. Really, That's I don't know if that works. <laughs> it's an idea. It's a concept. One of the, I mean, I think it's interesting because I just got a pop up that says, "What's new in in OS X Mavericks? Take a tour." Um, I think there's going to be a lot of things that people are, that are going to kind of crop up over the coming days, weeks, whatever. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be someone out there that spends the next 24 hours digging into every nook and cranny. Yeah, like dictation and speech now being available offline. Mm -hmm. That's something I think the phone needs. And looking at it, I it, think it takes it. It's it's seven. It's an additional seven hundred and eighty-five meg when you, when you download it. Um, the phone, well, you still Siri. The dictation piece still has to go out to the Apple server to then handle the dictation. I did it the other day. It was way faster. Unless they made a big change in iOS seven, I'm not entirely sure that it's not online. It is not. It the is online because it is online because here, put your phone in airplane mode and try to dictate. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on. Here's some interesting stuff. Uh, so I was wondering, is like, are these new updates? Is this iLife 13? It, 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 you know, what if I already have iPhone and everything? Uh, I do have updates, and it's not updating this page for some reason. 
uh, if I can pull up the desktop again, uh, it, it does have updates for it. I already had Keynote Bot, uh, have iMovie, I have iPhoto, and they they are all updating. So so it is inclusive because I, I hadn't seen anything specific about that. So if you have this, so wait a minute. So I already have iLife free from the past ones, so I get all the new stuff anyways. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I love how inclusive. And that was the big message today about we want everybody to be able to use these technologies in they're just selling Macs. This is all. Well, this, I think this, they've. I think they've taken their app store to the point where. I mean, yes, they're making thirty percent off of every sale. Mm-hmm. There's now enough sales going on, and they're actually hitting the enterprise with more enterprise volume app purchase programs. Mm-hmm. So I think they're seeing that. Okay, we're making enough money off of all of the other apps. I mean, it's now, I think, over a billion dollar business per year. That okay, now we can afford to give you your iMovie for free. Yeah. We can afford to give you GarageBand. You know what? In GarageBand, we realize it costs us a little more money for the samples. We use other people's samples, so we're gonna we're gonna let you do an in-app purchase in GarageBand. I think they they're they're finding that oh, we can reach the masses mm-hmm. through kind of very, either freemium or, or alternative and ways. Very hold on openly. Here's here's this iMac down here that has not been updated. I think it's still running. It's running whatever uh, Mountain Line, I guess. Um, but right at the top, I'm sorry, I have the wrong one up here. Uh, I'd like to point out while you're figuring that out that Apple has made a $5.5 billion off of hosting the App Store. Yeah. So there it is. <laughs> they made 13, they said they announced today that they gave $13 billion to developers. If developers get 70, 70% of revenue, that means that Apple gets the other 30. Mm-hmm. And if you do that, it's five and a half billion dollars. So, so they can afford free iMovie and some mm-hmm. free yeah. iWork apps. But, yeah, five point five billion dollars will make And they cut two hundred dollars off the pros. Yeah, two hundred dollars off the MacBook Pros. So now there's like, okay, how much do I want to spend down to the hundredth of dollar? And I'd say, well, you know, so a MacBook Pro is just that little bit screen. more energy with the ret so with the retina even. Yeah, these are all retinas. They knocked the, the non retina down to like eleven ninety nine. The fifteen inch not non retina doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's there's like that's one interesting. There's like one non-Retina MacBook Pro, but it's like a hundred dollars cheaper than a Retina. It's like still buy a Retina. Yeah. So now you're pushing everybody to that. You're pushing everybody to the to the bigger technology so they can do more important things to it. You're telling everybody everybody goes to their sees their update button uh, pop up and you have a free upgrade to of OS X Mavericks. Everybody's going to jump on that right away, right? I wonder if this update here for uh, uh, I have a supplemental update actually for everything for the like, current <laughs> operating system. We'll just skip that for now, probably. Um, and also, I noticed over here, and I think this finally updated uh, when I it, it did uh, ask if I wanted to turn on automatic do- updates. So now, just like our phones, now everybody's going to be up there. Now, uh, I have not seen a problem with an update just jack everything up on my Mac. Yeah. But there's one person who's probably had one and it's like, don't turn it on, it'll break everything. Yeah, there was actually a little bit of that well, when they were talking about it like uh, today on the one show. So um, I worry more about apps going to, to freemium models where they're going to take something away and then you're going to have to pay for it later on. I worry more about changes to apps versus an automatic app update Broke everything, system. Yeah, or, yeah. or the, well, we well, we already have automatic updates. We've been doing on Windows machines for the longest. One time. company that did have a problem with it, and I blame the company. It's not Apple's fault. I think it was LastPass. Mm-hmm. LastPass during an update corrupted your entire password library, oh. and then made lots of people oh. sad. Ooh. I think it was last. It was either LastPass or there's another. No, 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 no. no. It was something one. else. It was another one. But it was a pa- it was a password one. Okay. That that because um, that's on them. Not on right. Apple. It's it's not Apple's fault that. No. People pushed out a crappy app. So how much do you trust them? I, I, I would like. I would. I, mean, I wonder if you can get in here and change it a little bit. I'm okay with Apple updating. I'm fine with it. I look at it from the security perspective of why wouldn't I let Apple update? Yeah. So and it's usually kind of a pain in the butt because sometimes they involve restarts, and I'll sit on like my one work computer will sit there for a while uh, without without being updated. Uh, let's get into it. I want to keep to uh, this time frame here uh, so Chachi doesn't get mad at us for becoming the Apple. He already dropped. This week. Huh? He already dropped. He already dropped out? Crazy Krause is back. Chachi left. Uh, he's he's, he's sticking it out. He's the I, I see. Guy. I see. I see Chachi probably with like a banner in his house. Like He's out front, which yeah. is really awkward since I don't think anybody <laughs> knows what we do down here. Um, uh, all right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make Crazy Krause happen. 
talk about Windows Phone. What? No, 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 no. We got one more Apple thing. Oh, no. Wait. Oh, wait. That. Yeah, that. That thing. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hold on a second. We got. Wait. Oh, 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 actually. Oh, fuck me. Well. What happened? Our cast just crashed. <laughs> so there's all the video. Boing, boing, boing. <laughs> Press start to continue. We got the mini, we got the air, and we got iOS seven oh three. I think that's I think that's what we have left to cover. Yeah. In in the All right, I gotta remember if I can recover this. In, in, in the fruity realm. Bytes, that, awesome one, that, should, awesome, that should go to that should, I should be able to recover this from Justin TV, so um, we we'll just continue as going, you know. I just want to say that my iPad and my iPhone are now running 703. <laughs> we're back. Uh, yeah, we had a little bit of a crash, uh, but uh, so we are probably going to be recovering that off of Justin TV. So the uh, video quality probably just got a lot better all of a sudden. So sorry uh, about that. Uh, right, AJ? Uh, oh, and I'll get your video back to you too, AJ. Because uh, we because we because we anger the Apple gods and almost forgot to uh, talk about I iPad, I guess. Uh, so there's that. Uh, oh, no. Hold on. <laughs> Real quick. iOS 703. They snuck that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, really under the radar. They have uh, iCloud keychain. Uh, I have a slide from. I don't know if you can see this. 881 megs of it. On. Not good. How big is the update? Four, mine was 40 oh, it's 67 meg. megs. Yeah. But, okay. hey, look. I, I don't get the update of it. I have usage settings that tell me to clear some stuff out. Interesting. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it, but it's kind of expected. We got all new iTunes and everything else and uh, to go along with all this. And yeah, last I knew, mine was not showing me that I had an update available, even though I had heard about it. So iPads. Um, there's no iPad anymore. Here's iPad no. Air. Which it's it. I mean, they dropped a half, almost a half a pound off of that device. Yeah, that's pretty darn impressive. Um, and I'll tell you what, this this web page right here, I mean, is looks oh. a thousand times better than any other company's tablet offering. Oh, when, yeah. when, you're, when you're trying to look at what I'm get, what you're getting with the device. This is this is incredible right here. Um, it, it was the same thing with the Mac Pro. The, the design team they have on this, they're using. Uh, this has got to be all. Uh, HTML5 kind of situation. Um, but it, it impressive that this, again, this is just uh, in place replacing. We're still selling the iPad 2, by the way. What, now, and here's my thought behind that is, so don't forget that doesn't have the retina display. Nope. So you do not need near the processing power for but what probably still. the typical, but what the typical iPad 2 user is playing words with friends and surfing their website. You're saying it's fine. Yeah, You're they're, saying... They're, they're not going to go download the new Infinity Blade. They don't need the new 64-bit arch architecture. Yeah. They're not editing giant iMovie crazy stuff, which they did update, of course, all the iMovie and everything for this as well. Uh, so great, you know. Um, I'm curious to get the update on iMovie for my phone and see how, how they've updated the phone part of it. It doesn't, of course, will probably not work on my iOS 5 iPad 1, you know. Um, you never know. Yeah, you never know. Well, it hasn't. It requires a camera last I knew. So it won't uh, install. So, yeah. Um, iPad mini. Uh, now Retina. What? iPad mini now with Retina. Now with Retina at $399 down to uh, $299 for the non-Retina last mm -hmm. year's model. So the last year's model is the iPad 2 of that line. Um, they're skipping a chip on that, too. Are they? Because So they're going from A5... Skipping the A6 and going to A7 well, on the Mini. What's what's the iPad 2 at then? iPad 2 is probably at the A3? A3? Four. Are you kidding? No, A4. A4? It's got to be A4. Oh, they don't put it side by side in the specs, <laughs> it looks like, um, with the iPad Air. So, so, wait, so what happens here when I go look up iPad? Is it... Uh, iPad 2 has an A5. Has an A5. Has an A5. They say it's still there. A5. But where do I get to it? Compare iPad models, maybe. Because it's just this Air Mini. Okay, there we go. Um, they did something to the iPad 2 when they came out with the iPad 3. They did 
they did bump that chip spec. They did. Okay. When, when they dropped the price, and I think it, I think it had something to do with they pulled the chip out of the phone, right? Because they had trays of chips. Yeah. And and okay. did a small spec bump when the iPad two got reduced in price. So they do have they're both dual core A five chips in the iPad two and the iPad mini. So there actually is a good bit of parity there. Uh, but they, they're not having to power. Except you have a way better camera on the iPad mini. Yeah. So. Um, but you don't have to power that, the, yeah. the retina display. I mean, they said, I mean, even they said today, they claimed that the reason they got the, the, the size and the, and the weight down on the iPad was because of the new A7 processor and the way it can, it can do better utilization. They actually shrunk the battery. And they're getting the same battery life out. Oh, wow. That's impressive. That's how they got a, a ha almost a half a pound off the device and trimmed, I think, probably, I'm guessing, about an inch. I'm really surprised. They're not even, the like, device. maybe even updating the iPad 2. Why not have the uh, iPad 2 pretty much the same specs and at least update the connector? Because it's. I'm sure they're pulling ref They're probably taking iPad 3s and 4s, refurbing them, and, and using, gutting them for parts. It could be. could be. Uh, the, the iPad 2 is the only one without Siri. Um, the only one still on the micro SIM instead of the nano SIM. I mean, this is. I mean, it, it, the more it's, it's not it doesn't even have a megapixel uh, camera on the back camera. Although great because I hate when you guys are taking pictures of shows holding up an <laughs> iPad in front of your face. I love no. I love the people. I, I don't like it too bad on this rant. The people that instead of watching the show, they're they're paid to come see have the iPad in front of their face, so they're watching the video of the show that they're taking. It's, Thanks, it's, Louis. It's ridiculous. Well, it did save that one guy at a baseball game. That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Um, okay, uh, but but the, so not terribly exciting. Interesting. Uh, maybe I'm due for an iPad. I don't know. I'm definitely. I'm, I, I, I'm, I know I do, but I'm kind of getting away with it because now I have myself with two iPad ones, and I just like, well, this will do this one thing over here. They're still great for displays at my DVD table. Mm -hmm. um, so you like an iPad three. What's that? Yeah, I have one for sale as well. Oh, there you go. Maybe you know, they, you, I don't need the newest iPad. Maybe, maybe I'll just uh, uh, prey on your guys' uh, second hands. My thing is, I want to get rid of all the thirty pin connectors around the house. Yeah, I'm yeah, that's my, a pain in the butt. My thing here is not with the iPad Air. Air iPad Air, great. It's with the iPad. Three ninety nine. The Nexus Seven with LTE for fifty dollars cheaper. Yeah, but yeah. and and I mean, you could say the same thing about other pieces of hardware that Apple makes. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I said my my Nexus Seven. I paid what two hundred two thirty four. Uh, but if still, you remember the if you remember the iPad, it's four ninety nine. Yeah, basically every Android tablet had to hit that price, point. and so they all went down to the seven inch screen. And have done pretty well in that seven-inch range. Yeah. But you have the Kindle Fire HDX. You have the Kindle, uh, the Nexus Seven. You have uh, there was another one. I can't remember. And now you have the iPad Mini. Yeah. And the iPad Mini is a solid hundred seventy dollars more. I'm curious to see how they do with it. Well, and, and here, here's my thing. So you have, and you've you've explained this this issue, the apps that do not adapt well from phone to android tablet mm -hmm. and i will say i will i will be honest with you the number i i see i'm seeing a growing number of ipad minis adoption at work and they're all female and they like their iphone they realize that they get their same apps and, and it fits in their purse it's in their purse <laughs> it's the purse ipad it's what <laughs> my wife wants one that's why she wants one because they're like oh I'll fill my purse i don't have to carry this giant purse anymore you know, to, to, to do that. Although, that's also why she wants a uh, Mac Air. MacBook Air. The 11-inch. Yeah. Which, that's here's my question for that. Why does that device not get a Retina display? I, I go back to battery. Battery size power. I, I, I think that's it. I, I think they haven't cracked that puzzle as well as they have with this new iPad. And I think they can only massively redesign one object at a time as well. Uh, well... Let's take a look. Let's 
going to Apple's website. Look up the thing. MacBook Pro right now is quite yeah. 13 inch. So let's compare the 13 inch MacBook here to the 13 inch Apple MacBook Pro. Right. So, there it is, size and length. So the MacBook Pro with a Red display is 3.46 pounds, 8.6 inches deep, 2.3 inches wide, 0.71 inches high. Yeah. Oh, slash MacBook Air. And we'll go to the tech specs. And the 13 inch MacBook Air weighs 2.96 pounds, is 8.94 inches deep, 12.8 inches wide, and has a height of 0.11 inches to 0.68 inches. They are effectively, oh, I don't know, a half a pound difference. In Oh, about a pound difference in weight. I'm sorry, that was the 11. Yeah, they're like a half a pound difference in weight, and the Retina MacBook is actually smaller width and depth. Wise. It's just the thickness that's different, and that thickness is only 0 0.03 inches on the, on the back end. Mm -hmm. Why put a Retina screen in the back of the air? It's right there. And in fact, the price is a two hundred dollar difference. Hmm. So again, what's the point when let's see, what's the battery like? That was the big thing. Twelve hours on the MacBook Air and nine hours oh, on the MacBook that's... Pro. So it's a difference of three hours on wireless web, one hour on movie play. So if you need an extra two hours and you don't want to retina display, back over there. If you want a really, 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 really nice retina. And I'm, I'm almost ready to throw my money at a $1,499, 256 gig retina MacBook Pro. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it, it really, it really does. It, 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 yeah, it's easy to slide into that at this point. See, if I if I were to go back and, and rethink the whole air strategy that I used, I would do one of two things: go to the eleven inch air, or go to a pro with Retina. Mm -hmm. the, the I mean, the thirteen inch MacBook Air doesn't make any sense. Yeah, point. right. No, no, at, at this, this point, point, it's if you're on the size, you might as well go for the power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean that half a pound is the only difference. Yeah, yeah. I like my my wife has one, mm -hmm. and it's nice, but she there's like no difference. The, the difference between my non-retina MacBook Pro and her MacBook Air is very significant. And I say, Half a pound. and to be honest, it's plenty of power too uh, for the cheaper, the, the smaller one. Uh, as long as you're not doing any heavy video editing, but I hear video editing on the low end works pretty well with it. I'm sure you're doing some, you know, pretty easy iMovie stuff. It's great, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, they've really packed a ton of power into these guys. It's 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 been pretty good. Um, all right. All right. Well, I think that's everything. Yeah, I think I think it's everything for Apple for the most part, and we'll see how it goes. It, it was just a lot of the, the biggest thing I think was the price uh, 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 change on everything. Um, just real, real quick recap: yeah. so we got the MacBook Pro, the Mac, the Mac Pro, the iPad Mini, the iPad Air. You got Mavericks, and you got iOS seven hundred three. Mm -hmm. I think that's everything. I, and that now, when you when you install new applications, it, when you go into the launch pad, it puts. Twinkles and sparkles around your icons. Yeah, he, uh, yeah sorry, sorry, I was a little distracted during your thing, AJ. Because he had to come over and show me the twinkles and, and, and everything on the... Uh, wow, that's that's amazing. Um, all right, so tell me what's going on. Uh, uh, Microsoft did some stuff. They have a new OS. They they released the update for free to 8.1. Um, I installed it on three devices, and taking a picture of that got me tweeted from the Microsoft account. There you go. I, uh, there you I go. updated my home machine. What's I that? updated my work VM. Yeah. Uh, it's nice. Yeah. Uh, it's not so much what Microsoft did, they won. I'm far more interested in what Nokia and Microsoft, Microsoft did with Windows Phone. Okay. Uh, we have the new GDR3, uh, which is effectively like a 7-1 type thing on the iOS world. 
GDR3 brings in support to a 1080p display, which now allows Nokia to bring out the 1520, the 1080p 6 inch phone, the 1320 6 inch 720p smartphone, and now allows them to bring in some apps. And Nokia went out and basically brought in the three biggest ones that Windows Phone users have been begging for. Fine, Instagram, and Flip. And if you think that Instagram going to Windows Phone isn't a big thing, remember back to when Android didn't have Instagram? Yeah. <laughs> and Android users were freaking out because they didn't have Instagram? That's Windows Phone users now. Didn't they like effectively double how many people were on Instagram when they when they came over to Android? Like it was yeah. ridiculous the, the the massive jump in traffic that they had. I, it, granted, that's not going to happen. I think as much here with the three percent Windows Phone users, uh, but still, at least it's a reason to get it. I I would imagine there are teenagers not getting Windows Phone because there's no Instagram or Vine. You know that I, was a big thing mm-hmm. with Android. I mean, I guarantee somebody Google went out and saw about people on Instagram and said, listen, let me level with you. I've got a pile of cash in my in the trunk of my phone. Make this app. Mm-hmm. When they got Facebook to release the app on, on day one um, as well, so and Facebook owns Instagram, not that they're, the companies are still kind of seg- segregated or... Oh, they're or getting they're separate. Separate. But... But I'm sure Facebook has some influence over road mapping of, of device support. Mm-hmm. And as Facebook moved forward, I'm sure they were pushing a little bit on Instagram. Yeah. I think the Instagram find flipboard piece gives Windows Phone a bit of credibility as a third platform. Because Blackberry can't get it. They're not getting Vine. They're not getting Instagram. They so just got I think it lends that little bit of credibility, that little bit of, oh, hey, you guys are for real. Uh, I have a Nokia Lumia at home. It's not bad. I mean, I paid 115 bucks on eBay for it, and I got GDR3 or GDR2. GDR3 hasn't been released yet. Hey, if you want GDR3, sign up for the developer program. If you want, if you want GDR three, uh, Kraus, I think a couple episodes ago talked about going up and signing up for a the app studio. For the app studio, um, yep. if you go sign up for that, you can get GDR three early. Yeah. Now here's the thing, though. This is where Windows Phone swings into the Android lane. Windows Phone relies on third party manufacturers. Get GDR3. But a lot of the really cool stuff that goes on the Nokia Williams, it's from Nokia. Nokia hasn't put out their uh, their GDR3 up there, which at one point was called Bittersweet Shimmer. Hmm. Not different. Which was, uh, that was also called a like name. Lumia Black. Yeah, Black. Yeah, it's called Lumia Black, which is way better than Bittersweet Shimmer. But that brings in a lot of really cool features. And Windows Phone 8.1 Blue, which I guess is GDR4, is supposed to be like a Windows 8.1 for Windows Phone. And I, I think you'll see the combination of app stores. I think you'll see uh, RT start to really blend m- probably more towards the phone platform. Uh, yeah. I th- but, and and, and the... Get- the development suite is definitely going to integrate better across across their devices, which is another. I think you did that, but sorry. no, go ahead. I think once you get that, you can get Microsoft into an Apple facility where they have a tablet in the Note 2520 and all of their the Surface RTs and all that. You get that going with Windows Phone. And you get like Instagram on tablets and Vine on tablets, and you get all these apps to start developing for a tablet. Now you're starting to poke at Google. And I actually heard a really interesting theory on uh, 
the talk show, which is John Cooper's yeah. uh, podcast. And he, they were specifically talking about Microsoft partnering with Apple. Because Microsoft's not terrible at online services, but they don't do very well with mobile stuff. And Apple does really well with mobile services, but they don't do very well with online services. So basically, let SkyDrive and Live and Bing be the backing for like iOS. Which Bing is now? If you don't say Google, when you do yeah, a search, exactly. it is it is Bing. And, and and I think right after some of the a bunch of the Samsung lawsuits came out, there was a not I don't know how well publicized it was, but there was some agreements made between Apple and Microsoft. Yeah. saying that they weren't going to go after each other like Apple and Samsung were. So I, I yeah, can see I, them... I think Apple, once they got that billion dollars, everybody went, all right. All right <laughs> like, nobody wants to take Apple to court. I mean, if you go after Apple, you better have a darn good case. Because if you don't, it's a billion with a B in front of your name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, you know, I, I, just a real quick, your your touch on um, Microsoft kind of eating into Android, I could definitely see that because I don't see many people hitting that tablet space on at, at a network level, like an LTE carrier based level, and I I don't see that much propaganda around Android and their their LTE devices, whereas I see more with the iPad in that realm. And now that the, the tablet you're talking about, the Lumia um, 2520, that's carrier based, and and it comes in it comes in at a price point that it, it's it's a no brainer. If you're if you're in the Microsoft ecosystem or you're looking at an RT device, it's perfect. Pick it up. I mean, subsidized, you're probably going to see that that device come in at like a two hundred dollar price point. Unsubsidized, I think it was three ninety nine or four ninety nine. That's not bad. I mean. I- I'm, I'm interested to see where this goes. It really seems like Microsoft has their business together on the phone on the phone side. It'll be interesting to see what they do with that in regards to RT, and then how that plays into the desktop side. Mm-hmm. Um, I really think Microsoft has their stuff together. They with eight one they brought in SkyDrive Live Server, so now if you put your my documents in the SkyDrive folder, it automatically backs it up to SkyDrive, which is kind of cool. Kind of works in that Dropbox, Box.com type of thing, yeah. except out of the box and from Microsoft. And I don't think, there's, there's not a solution like that for Apple, for files, really. Yeah. Other than if you're using their programs, like Pages and stuff, it goes up in the iCloud, right? Yeah, it does go up in iCloud, and that, that gets a little no, con- it's, it's I wanna, I want to put my stuff here, regardless of what it is, and now it's backed up. And I think you're going to see more. I think things like the Chromebook, the Chrome OS stuff, it is kind of pushing that. Because schools are buying Chromebooks. Mm-hmm. The, that, the education is the biggest thing, and, and, and it is happening. Uh, same with iPads, uh, uh, too. But I think people are going to leave more towards Chromebooks in, in, in the long run. Um, yeah, it, it's so. So they got to compete with that. They, get, the, you know, uh, pe- we've been trying to get people to back up for how many years? Still don't do it. You know, the education is not there. It's complicated uh, or restrictive. You know, um, and, and it's great that there's this built-in solution. You know, dumb it down for everybody. That's what App- Apple's been really good at mm-hmm. it, uh, with everything else, at least. And. and- I think Chromebooks serve a purpose. I I know a couple of people that have bought Chromebooks and they mm-hmm. liked them at first, mm-hmm. and then there was kind of a void that was still missing. I'm hoping as Google gets some additional online services, and they seem to be working with Google Plus to do that. Yeah. As far as like some of their ph- photography, their video, I think they need to get some of that cloud-hosted artsy applications to really tread ground or break ground mm. as, as far as There's already- full replacement. I, I, I just see a lot more uh, yeah. d- talking to people from school districts, a, a lot more school districts that have a multitude of options 
on the iPad from a learning perspective that just aren't there yet. Yeah. And with in in the Google universe, and and I, I think maybe what it is is maybe not as many learning companies have created Google apps, especially not well, in the Chrome about, world. Well, is it about versus, Google apps? Because you, you, when when you look at a uh, Chromebook, Chrome OS, it's the internet. You know, it's you're using internet, resources right. on the internet. If they're set up that we have a service through a, you know, not directly, but like a Linda.com or something, and that's your educational thing. Um, I think what you have is you give these kids Chromebooks, they can type up their par papers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can do the, I think it's the jump from they have Windows PCs. I, I would agree with you, but their the, work. Where, where I see the, the iPads coming in handy, I, I see, I've talked to a couple school districts that use them in the classroom, mm -hmm. and what they do is, as they're teaching, they actually live poll the class. And that's the thing. And, the, and it, where the iPad the comes in is, is a new way of learning. Right. So it depends on what they're going for. Um, if you're just typing up a paper, yeah, I mean... Yeah, if you throw, just want... I want, the, I want the kids to know how to use the internet, use these resources that we're using on the internet, because this is how you're going to do stuff anyways. Google Docs provides, you know, enough to make a paper and maybe a slideshow presentation. This is fine. This is all we need to do. You're going to something where uh, you talk about early learning, like you were talking, you know, down to, like, kindergarten. It's ways of learning, mm -hmm. you know, versus, versus that other thing, so... Um, and cost. I think the cost and control is another big thing there uh, when it comes to the Chromebooks. And I think that's why a lot more go towards it. And they can kind of, I think they can kind of control them because if you have, I mean, there has to be something where you, if you have like Google apps and the kids have an account and stuff, and then you, you know, especially if it's a school given, mm -hmm. you know, in school, this is used sort of situation. And that's my guess. And, and the interesting thing is, I think you're starting to see that Google tried to push really into that that realm with schools, mm -hmm. and I see Apple as they evolve their their platform. The ability, one of the big things that came in with iOS seven that that, uh, that I'm using at work and we're, we're we're heavily evaluating is the ability to purchase an application as an enterprise, assign it to your Apple ID, so you get it. And if you leave the company, I am entitled to pull that application back, put it back into my licensing stack to give it to the next employee that takes your place. And on your device, the next time you launch it, it gives you a warning that says you have 30 days. This was corporately purchased for you. You've left the company. You've been de-enrolled. You have 30 days to purchase this application if you would like to. Otherwise, it will be it will be automatically removed. That's that's kind of amazing, right? I mean, and and that's something they 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 had to restructure. I think that's one of the reasons that the App Store went down for so long. I think they really took the time to completely. They said, you know, what? we were going to have to take it down anyway, so let's fix the security glitch and let's implement what we were going to implement when iOS seven launched. Mm -hmm. And instead of trying to roll it out piecemeal, I think they, the, the app level VPN that came in where you can assign VPN profiles to an individual app, not the entire device, the volume purchase program changes. I, I think you're going to see Apple's coming in from the back end now and saying, okay, schools and uh, enterprise, we're going to embrace the fact that all your people are bringing in these devices and you have, you don't have enterprise capabilities to deploy things to them. Uh, I, j I just really see, and it'll be interesting to see what Google's answer is to that, because the one thing that irks me about an Android device is there's no way to use it unless you have Gmail. Yeah. So whereas yeah. My, my iOS devices, or even my Microsoft device, I activated my Microsoft device, oddly enough, with a Gmail account, but I, I do have that ability to move from platform to platform, whereas Google, they're, they're a little more strict at keeping you in that side of their ecosystem. Hmm. I mean, my grandfather's going to be without email for four days because he's switching home providers and he refuses to get a we, public uh, type mail account. I, we, I had a little bit of that <laughs> with my grandfather because he switched. He, he thought that he couldn't attach files and he thought it was Comcast's fault. And he switched to Verizon and he still had a problem with it. I was like, 
I, no, that's not right. But I'm glad you're back on Verizon. And he's enjoying it. He, he says, no, I'm better off on Verizon. It's, mm-hmm. it's working a lot better. Um, so there's that. One, uh, real, real quick, one of the other things that they that Nokia added, they're adding into the 1020 and 1520 line. They're adding um, raw photos. So when you take pictures, it's, in raw. it's going to be not only yeah, in JPEG, I, but it's going to be in raw. I was hearing a discussion on that, and that opens up what you can do with that photo greatly. Mm-hmm. As far as editing, especially on the 1020 with 41 megapixel camera. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, storage is going to be an issue because there's no removal SD slot. There will be on the 1520, but there is none on the 1020. Some big files just for a still. Um, I wanted to share something. Uh, this they, they talked with the the creators of this on uh, triangulation over on Twit uh, last week. A Kickstarter that I think within 24 or 48 hours meet it met its $400,000 goal. It's called Cast AR. Uh, Their tagline here is the most uh, versatile AR and VR system. So the idea is uh, you have these glasses and they're fairly prototyped. They're kind of getting to the point where a little, I think they're hand making these or they're going to have a little bit broader run of these in manufacturing or something, but they're not, this isn't even with the goal of making this like a product like the Pebble watch or anything. Um, but the idea is you have this material, which I can't remember what it's called, but it's something that like you can get like at a Home Depot or something. You just lay it out, and you can pretty much create a screen with this stuff. It's kind of like you know when you green screen something, and that surface mm-hmm. that you keyed out, that green, is what becomes the background. In this case, it becomes the screen when you look through the glasses. So what's happening is you have motion tracking projectors on top of those that pair of glasses above each eye. So it, they're both projecting something that's, you know, based on where your eye is. Uh, and then you have shutter glasses underneath that that you're looking through that's making everything come back to you in 3D. So things like there was a, it, like, and then there's this wand that's attachment cool. that you can use. Uh, I really kind of think this kind of like partly uh, uh, compared to uh, the, I think it was called the magic eye or something like but they used the eye toy on PlayStation 3. And they had a wand and they had this book that was marked down. And you hold it up and there's like a hole and a dragon in the book and something they, like well that. Well, that and they had, I think they had actually had a board game that worked with that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And, and this, that's where they're going with something like this, I think. Um, but, and, and this is actually a, pro, a project that started at, at Valve for Steam. Um, was this where the lady took it with her? Yes, this is the lady that <laughs> took it with her. Okay. So, uh, and this is it finally coming to fruition. Uh, they took the Maker Fair. There's some video of people trying it out there. One of the uh, kind of use cases they sh- they show off and kind of explain in more detail. I'll see if I can get to it in the video. Is the idea of this D and D thing, and and you can play this D and D, and on the screen it's getting projected, but you see different things depending on what you're hooked up to. Um, so how much is this? You can get one. I thought it was like about a hundred and. Almost two hundred dollars. You get the starter package, which is uh, the cast our glasses uh, with the built-in tracking system, as well as one meter by one meter surface. And again, I believe this is a surface you can just go to the hardware store and get pretty cheap. So I can just like put it up on my wall, mm-hmm. and that's the big screen for whatever the application is. Uh, what was it? Two eighty-five. Uh, this package includes the cast our glasses with the built-in tracking system, one large, uh, a large one meter, meter by two meter surface. Magic wand, we saw in that one clip there when they were playing the game. AR and VR clip-on. That's the other thing. They have another clip-on that goes uh, in front of the glasses. So the projector just projects to that surface, and now it's just a virtual reality headset. So it's a, it's really interesting. And, and you know, stuff like you move your head, and, 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 and the idea that reason VR doesn't work, uh, like the Oculus Rift, people get motion sickness, is because... You're, you can tell the difference in motion between mm-hmm. what you're seeing, and that's what screws you up. That's what screws you up when you're on your boat. You're seeing the horizon do this, but you're feeling this and this going back and forth. Um, they solve that because you're looking at a surface. The surface isn't moving, or it's moving in a case of how you're moving. Right. And the motion tracker changes what is, what's being projected along with that. So there's a better sync going on with your perception of things. Just look at it. If you actually bought those, the things you wouldn't have to buy. 
<laughs> like board games and Legos like an, and yeah, like, hey, and that's the thing. It's such a high tech thing, and, and board games has seemed to be a really big application for this. Um, there's a community that's building stuff for it. It seems. Um, it looks like we're having connection difficulties with AJ. Are you still downloading stuff? I've been downloading the whole time. Oh jeez. Um, it could go somewhere. I, I, it's not like at that point where it's being mass produced, mass developed for, but it's one of those early, it has a community sort of situation. So we just lost AJ for a second there. No. So looks like he's back. There we go. There he is. Um, let's see, call recovery is so much easier to hang out than it oh, is in Skype. They sure just like, is. oh, I'll just pop back in. And there he is. We have two of him, but you know, that's fine. Um, but no, it, it seems like a really cool system. I don't know if you saw much of the three the the effects there on the screen there while we were playing. They, they look great. Yeah. So. I mean, I was I was really imp- and like I said, I, I mean, look at the look at the things you wouldn't have to buy. Mm-hmm. Like if it, you could, I'm sure there's going to be apps that come with it, and you're going to have to end up buying them. But just all the stuff. It feels like it's that early stage, like the leap motion is, where it's mm-hmm. like, well, we have these apps, and most of them are kind of more proof of concept than really anything else, you know. So there's that. What do you think, AJ? I don't know how much of this you caught while we were talking and showing the video. I, I caught a good bit. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if you're starting to use materials that aren't specialized, that's kind of awesome. Then that means that you can make things bigger or smaller and you don't have to worry about some company controlling how big or how small you can make. Mm-hmm. And then that changes the way applications can, match, can mature for them. Exactly. Um, it, what, well, what, kind of to that, when they were talking about, like, when they do flight simulators, you have to have this big thing, all this equipment and everything, have a giant screen, versus you just put this tarp up and there it is. You know, that kind of idea. I have obviously Pretty instrumentation cool. and everything like that, but, you know, s- still, like, that, that kind of changes how that kind of happens. So, anyways. Um, all right, with that, we gotta get out of here. We got talk tech and everything, and uh, I, I think we, I think we got all of it. I, I think we were fairly fair, you know. Yeah, I was, Apple I was, yeah, to Microsoft. I, I, I think Nokia. we, I think we hit a pretty real quick upcoming and awesome. Yes, upcoming um, and awesome. Obviously, iPads November first. Mm-hmm. Um, Windows RT eight one um, is back in the store. So if you have an RT device, you were, and you were like me, and you didn't update it on day one. They had a small problem bricking some devices. Mm-hmm. Um, that's back out in the store. And keep your eyes peeled for KitKat. I don't have a date for that, but that's obviously Google's next. It's coming up, coming up. There was yeah. somebody who went, went to the KitKat's website, and it buried in the code is, a, is code for a countdown. Mm-hmm. So look for the countdown. <laughs> this is the countdown to the countdown. So, AJ, you got something? Well, I, my upcoming awesome is uh, the LG Nexus 5. Mm-hmm. Suppose it's going to have the fans from Verizon. Uh, so I'm hopeful that I can maybe score one of them. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I know you're one for the pure Android experience. I, I would, believe. yeah, after after dealing with the Samsung Galaxy camera, mm-hmm. which don't get me wrong, I love the camera, I'm waiting on Android 4.3 mm-hmm. and the Zoom. I would never go to a non bare nexus type device yeah or google play device like you can get some of the samsung devices the moto yeah. one thing i don't know if you can get the moto actually HTC. htc htc yeah. i know the one you can get so i would never go back to a build that i re- had to wait for a carrier or a company to mm-hmm. repackage for me well that's why verizon dropped the ball with the galaxy nexus i mean they they had it and we talked about it on they dropped the ball and up yeah, and mm-hmm. I don't think that Verizon and Google are on the best of terms either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, they have the, uh, the the Nexus Seven with LTE, not for Verizon. It has the band that could do it, but Verizon on more than one occasion said they will not activate it on the network until they tested and proven and all this other stuff. Yeah, and that and that's been an interesting contention. Uh, uh, contention. Uh, Jeff Jarvis over on <laughs> speaking Google. Uh, says he has reported them to the FCC because yep. uh, something about the bands. They would said that we were going to leave everything they, open, mm-hmm. and they this bought is- the bands from the government. And as part of the deal, the government said you cannot restrict devices that are off. That's why 4G tethering is free. Um, 
and, and, and the, so and the line he's getting is it's not tested it's not tested to work on our network it's like well it doesn't need to be it's it open be so so that's going to be an interesting thing i'm curious to see what happens there um so hey uh, guys, if you want to talk geek with us, anything else, uh, hit us up uh, uh, live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday night about 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can join us in the chat room, uh, just like some of the guys like Chachi does, like uh, like Kill Krause from the – or the killer. That's a different guy. <laughs> uh, Crazy Krause. Sorry. I've been – a lot of juggle of stuff over there. Chilla. Chilla's hanging in the chat room. Mad Mike, all that stuff. Lego Marvel, Marvel is so much fun. Also, hi. Uh, so he's up there not giving me spoilers during the next show for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, and, of course, we're uh, uh, on Twitter at AwesomeCast. We're on uh, Google+, Plus, Facebook, and Talk Tech. Let us know any stories, comments, the stories that we talked about here. Uh, as always, thanks for our tweeter of the night, Mike Allen. He's been uh, uh, letting you guys know on Twitter what we've been talking about all night as well. Uh, so with that, thanks, uh, AJ, joining us from the uh, Internet and, uh, yes. and Chilla as well. We'll see you guys next week. Uh, you've been your awesome audience. Have an awesome week. So-